All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Inside Pool magazine. Insidepool.tv. Insidepool.tv, the billiard channel on the Roku, YouTube, everything and above. Uh, my name is Mike Andrews. Joined in the booth here with Mike Rakita. <laughs> this is uh, Premium Billiards here in Syracuse, New York for the CNY 8-Ball Bar Box Championships. Next matchup, Tony Romano versus Josh Welsh. Tony Romano is a double A. No, he's an A. Or no, he's an A, and Josh is an A as well. So actually, this is going to be even match. So that's my fault here on the scoreboard. Let me fix that for you folks here. Yeah, so this is going to be an even match. Race two, five. five. So you're going to be a good one, too. Well, it should be. Uh, Tony knocked me to the loser's side, and then uh, Josh beat you. Well, that's easy action. Josh got lucky beating me, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Tony's actually a really good player, but he's mostly a one-pocket straight pull player. Yeah, he's a great straight pull player. He was, uh, I consider him maybe 10 to 15 years ago the best straight pull player in Central New York. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people say that. I played him straight pull the other day, and he drilled me. He beat me uh, 100 to, like, 65, and I told him next time we play, I need 30 balls. Uh, I can't get him to play me, to be honest. Oh, really? It, yeah. It, it'll take me, like, a month and a half for me to ask Tony to play me. No, no he still won't do it. Wow. Well, Tony tried to shoot the 15 ball and missed, and Josh is up to the table here for the first time. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Oh, it's my fault I, that he missed. But blame everything on Mike Andrews. Your fault, too. You were both talking. Comment, commentate. Yeah, yeah, we talked it him up. Yeah, yeah, we did the commentator's curse on him. Well, we apologize to Tony if he's watching this back. He won't. Yeah, the the I just finished up here on this table. The table plays a little tough, but um, you know I pulled it out. Right next to me, my good friend Jeff Bradshaw was playing Lance, and Lance started out with a three pack. You know. And almost had a four pack. Should have had a four pack. So, it just goes to show that this table pays so fast underneath the lights that it really makes a difference. Because Lance played on this TV table earlier and he didn't do as well. He played against Jeff Leduca though. Yeah, well, that's true. But he didn't. He didn't shoot as good as he was over there. He didn't break and run anything on this table. Yeah. But. Uh, had to step out for a second I'm back here but um, yeah Tony's at the table I played Tony first round he's uh, a very good shooter even on the bar box well you broke and ran a rack on him you were getting three racks you should have won no I was getting two. Oh, you were getting two I was getting two but uh, if I had missed a ball Tony was running out from wherever he was it didn't matter well, the thing is, is he's such a great straight pool player that that game really can transition into eight ball. It does. Yeah. Especially on the small bar box table where everything's pretty much clustered together. Yeah, I mean, this, this table being a small table, tight diamond pockets, you know, it definitely makes things difficult. But, um, you know, a good straight pool player can break balls out. I had a couple of really good breakouts in my match, and... Uh, you know, you have to be able to do that on a bar table. Yeah, I had a feeling he was going to miss that. It looked like he overcut it a little bit, and he did. Doesn't leave him much with Josh, though. He's got the nine ball in the corner. Looks about it. Yeah. Well, if he, he was smart, like he should play safe. Just shoot the nine ball over near the ten ball and roll up right behind the eight. Because Tony's got that one, which is sitting right next to the eight, so... That's the smart thing to do here. But Josh always he takes the hero shots. You know, he's trying to run out every time. You like that. Like right there, you know, you can't take those hero yeah. shots. You have to play smart. Yep. Well, we were talking about this the last match we commentated together, you know. Winning pool is playing safeties. Safeties win games and win matches. Hero shots like that, it was a tough shot. Tough shot, tough save, take the save. And actually, that was an easy save, frankly. Yeah. Should be out right here. Yeah, Josh just gift wrapped uh, that that rack for him to get him a bead here. All right, Tony is up one nothing 
here at Premium Billiards in Syracuse, New York for the Central New York 8-Ball Bar Box Championships. Welcome, everybody. Okay. Welcome, everybody, joining us on the live stream and everybody joining us uh, on YouTube and the Roku Billiard channel. InsidePool.tv. InsidePool.tv. We are streaming worldwide, across the galaxies. There are aliens in nearby planets that are watching this match. Only uh, 23 light years away. Could be. It's like uh, Tony dropped one on break, so it's still going to be open table for him. Yeah, open table after the break, and which reminds me, thank you, Mike, for reminding me. Uh, give everybody a little bit of rundown on the rules here. It is winter break, eight ball, bar box. Uh, we have double A, A, B plus, and Bs and below. And uh, a double A playing a B would have to give them three beads or would have to bank three balls in the race to five. With this though, two, two A players, they're playing even. Playing even. No second ball break either. No second ball break, yep. You gotta break from the box. Which I, Seems fair at least. Yeah, I but mean, eight ball counts as a win. Eight yeah. ball on a break counts as a win, but you have to break from the box. There's no second ball breaking. Well, you can second ball break if you can pull it off breaking from the box, but that's, that's tough. That's very tough. Well, Josh actually doesn't have that bad of a rack here. I mean, the six ball is a little funny, but if he can get underneath it, he has a pocket up by the two ball for it. Yep. But the or thing even in the side if he gets the seven on right now. Yeah. The problem with Josh, though, is he rushes through, takes tough shots that he really shouldn't be taking sometimes, and he really just needs to calm down, really think about the rack, really think about where the cue ball is going, and control the rack, and then you can control the game. Let's see, I don't know why he did that, but... Might have a shot on the one ball right here, and it'll put a little draw on the other shot on the three. Goes for the three first. It's kind of messing up the eight ball a little bit, but... Yeah, well, if he shoots... If that six ball doesn't go, then he needs to stop shooting balls and play safe. Tie something up. Well, he rattled the one ball, See, though. he tried to get underneath the six. He could have gotten underneath the six had he played that seven ball correctly. He could have played the second seven ball nice and light, shot the one ball, got right underneath the six ball, and then three ball next. And then when you do that, you have an easy shot on the five ball and the eight ball's you know, wide open. Yep. But uh, that really comes down to not rushing it, taking your time, looking at the table, and, um, you know, figuring out how you need to maneuver the cue ball to be able to win the game. Because the last thing you want to do is, you know, turn loose Tony Romano with an open table. When you only got two or three balls left on the table, you're in trouble. Well, Josh had the five ball after. I thought that was a 13. No, that's a five, yeah. Right up there by the 8, the 9, and the 10 ball. See what Tony just said there? Should have thought that out. And that's really what it takes. Is you really got to think about what you're doing. That was a bad shot because if you're playing a good player, they should be able to get out here. As long as he's not too straight on the six ball, he can get position on the five or even the one. A little bit top right here, he should come off the top rail, off the side rail, and then have a straight in shot on the one. No, yeah, he played the right shot, but he didn't hit it well. Uh, he he stunned it a little bit, a little bit of rolling English to bump that ten ball out of his way, and he would have straight in one ball, and he would have had a good angle to play the eight in the side, or he could have drawn it back and played the eight all the way down. But leaving Tony a wide open table. Well, he's got to play the thirteen fifteen combo here, I think. Unless, yeah, I don't think he can get to the fifteen directly. Yeah. Now he's got the nine in the side. 
13 ball. And then we got winner, winner, chicken dinner. Or as Alvin would say, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> You can overhit this shot, so he's got a really slow roll. This good shot, yeah, great shot, right in the side. All right, Tony pulls ahead two to nothing in this race to five here at Premium Billiards in Syracuse, New York. One of the best pool rooms in all of New York State. I think the best pool room in all New York State. One of the best. Or at least sure. Central New York. Hmm? At least Central New York. Oh, yeah, the best pool room in Central New York for certain. I haven't played anything else outside. Uh, I've only played else elsewhere in Utica. I haven't played anything in Albany or Rochester or Buffalo. So. Oh, yeah, there's there's lots of good rooms. Rochester's got a good pool room. Buffalo, Bison Billiards, good pool room. New York City, you got Amsterdam Billiards. you got Steinway. Oh, Amsterdam. You got Rax. I mean, Rax is my favorite pool room in all of New York State. In Hempstead, Holden oh. Chin's room. I love that pool room. That's blasphemy. You live well, in Camilla. Well, I understand that, but it is. He's got great food, and uh, it's got a full bar. Never had the food here. That's why. It's true. I don't eat here often. I try not to. Whose fault is that? You, because I see you cooking. My, my food is delicious. <laughs> Even ask all the other people. They say I'm the best cook besides after Mark. We got a commentator on the side shrimp saying my cooking is very bad. But, yeah, there's definitely a lot of really good pool rooms in New York. There's a lot of uh, pool up here in the Northeast. And see what Josh did there? He stood right up. He did not stay down in the shot. He didn't commit to it. He looked like he just really didn't know what um, what he wanted to do next. And when you have those thoughts in your head, it's hard to uh, stay focused um, on the shot at hand. I guess somebody like Tony's been playing longer than we've been alive. That's very true. I'm only 27. He knows exactly what he's doing, yeah. Yeah. And notice he stays down, follows through. Follow through, that's the key in this game. Well, staying down and following through at the same time. See, every shot he's staying down until the ball reaches the pocket. You'll never see him jump up. Because he's not getting excited in his head, he knows exactly what he's doing. Out of all the people I see play here, Tony is actually one of the people I don't want to play. Unless yeah, it's, it's in tough. straight pool, because I know Tony, I know Tony will beat me in straight pool, but it'd be just a blast to watch him play. Yeah, he's it's good to watch him play. He's fun. Look, he's going for a uh, for a bridge shot right here. He's just got to be careful not to run into the eleven ball here, unless he's gonna, you know, blast right through it. But I think he's okay. He might be able to cut this, but then he's got to shoot the three ball in the same pocket. Yep. Make sure he gets past the 11 but this or is the 9 and 13. Cut. Yeah. Just got to get on the other side of the 9 and 13. It should be good. Well, he's also a one pocket player. He might be able to try and bank this, but he'll probably play safe. It's a good shot. Forcing Josh to go for the long pocket. He's got the 13 in the corner. You know, he might not. He might only have the 9 in that corner. Oh, okay, he's got the 13. He wouldn't be shooting if he didn't. See how he stayed down there? He committed and he made the shot. Yep. Now, as he goes back and he watches this, you know, video on, you know, the Billiard channel on the Roku or on, you know, uh, Ustream or um, YouTube. He'll hear us talking about that. And hopefully, he makes a mental note of it. You got to stay down. You got to commit. See right there too. I mean, he stood up. He really didn't commit. He didn't do exactly what he wanted to. He didn't really think about his position. 
He just thought of like a generalized shot. Okay, I'm going yeah. two rails. Well, no, you really need to know exactly where you're hitting on the first rail and the second rail. Put a follow on, I would have left him for the 9 out of 15. No, he just needed some right hand spin. See, Tony's okay here. He can play some high right and go one, two rails right back down and play the uh, eight ball on the bottom. Well, even draw will work too. Left corner. Just he put could draw, 15. but I don't think he wants to draw he past that 15. I think he goes past the 15. No, I don't think it does. This will be the most sickening bank I've ever seen if he makes this. He's two railing it. No. Still leaves Josh a little tough here because the nine ball. Well, the, the 11 ball is easy. And then just go up and down for the 15, then the nine. But if he cuts the two, then he has a chance nine. to scratch. Yeah, I mean, okay, so he does have the nine on the side. But you have a small pocket for that. That may have even been a good shot. Because he's leaving it tough. But Tony can definitely bank, so you don't want to give him very many chances at it because he'll figure it out. No, I don't think that's any good. Nope. No. Josh can thin this in the side, the nine ball, and come around for the 11 ball. Or thin cut the 11 ball in and come up and then halfway back down for the 9 on the side. See, you gotta hit that shot a little stronger than that. You gotta go up and then part way back down. You're better off than trying to slow roll it. Yeah. Can't slow roll here. You have to go for the two railers if you can go for a thing cut. Mm, he's okay. He can cut this in. I like cutting this in the top right hand corner where Tony's sitting. Yep. Leave a natural position for the eight ball. It's oh, on the see rail. It's going that way. It's on the rail though, so. I don't like that way because it brings that side pocket into play and the corner pocket if you overhit it. See, he was going dead at that corner pocket. Tony could bank this on the side, no problem. No, he might be able to cut it right in. Yeah, he's going to try and cut it in. I'll leave Josh a bank on the 15 if he misses. Oh, I thought he was going to go to the other side of it. I thought he was going to try and throw the eight ball in, basically. But he didn't. He tried to hit it flat. And Josh was worried about this because, you know, the side pocket's in play. And he got it. That was a great shot. I don't think that was the right shot, but he made it. The right shot was cutting that in with some high right. But he made it happen, so Josh gets himself on the board here and he's breaking. It's two to one. Here at Premium Billiards in Syracuse, New York for the Central New York Eight Ball Bar Box Championship. Thanks for joining us here on the Roku, on the Billiards channel or on YouTube, or for those of us watching us live on InsidePool.tv. Thanks for joining us. Mark, will you come over and rack them for us? Come on, be on TV, rack them for us. <laughs> Tony trying to get one of the owners, Mark, over here to rack for him. Boy, this is a tight table, I'll tell you that. Very tight. Tighter than out there. That's that's how it's got to be, one in the front, eight in the middle. Doesn't matter so about you. Okay. okay.
All right, Josh is set the break here. And rack number four. Looks like he made a ball. Oh, maybe he didn't. Yeah. No ball, so Tony's got open break. Or right. open uh, table. I thought he made a ball. Might have been the next table over. Yeah, because I heard the noise, yeah. Should be an easy out for Tony right here. It's a tough rack, though. I mean, you got everything's tied up. The two ball tied up, the seven ball's tied up, the five ball. Well, so it's not tied up anymore. Hmm? You just moved, up, moved the seven over to the, no, the, the four ball. Two. Yeah, the four ball then. The five ball's a little problem, too. Yeah, the five ball's a big problem. Yeah, they can go off the 11 to the side, though. Unfortunately, we don't have a <coughs> camera angle. We're down a camera here, so we apologize for not being able to see that. Um, Having the bodies in there. front of the camera. Yeah. Like you were last your last match. Oh, I was. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I enjoyed seeing you bend over the camera a little bit. Good shot there. But really. He's running out of options here because now he doesn't have any anything he can shoot to be able to break those two sets of balls open, the four and the two ball. And he's got a mass eight to even make the next ball. Yeah. This is just spelling trouble for Tony because, y you know, he's got to shoot at the two ball now. He's got to make a good hit. He's going to open it up. And you just can't leave your opponent with a runnable table. Can't run him out unless you see the run out. Even then, nothing can be tied up. Yeah, I mean, the 10 ball will help break open the 15 ball. So, and you better believe Tony's thinking about stuff like that. So he might try and just roll this up right on the back. Of the, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't think he was going to do that. But that will that work out, out okay. pretty well for him. Nine ten doesn't look dead, but it could be. No damage there, yeah. Tony just said no damage. It really wasn't. Except and actually... Except for tying up the nine ball still. Well, no, no. The nine ball has pockets to go to. But the uh, the four ball is still Tony's big problem here. That looks like ball in hand for uh, yeah, Josh right there. Hand. Nothing hit a rail. Nothing hit a rail. Josh come for the breakout off the four to yeah, grip that ten needs, ball. He's got to do that. It's the right shot. See again, he just rushed through that, you know, and rushing through that and not knowing exactly where you're going to land is going to put you in trouble. He might be able to make the fourteen ball and get position on the twelve. So big if he pocket that, off he'll the be 11. okay. <coughs> And again, he hit that too soft. He needed to come back out for the 12 ball or the 10. But where he's at there, he's limited balls he can pocket. If he would have come back out to the center of the table, Put a little draw. Which is sort of ideal. Put a little draw on the 12 ball, he should come back center. Leave himself for the 13. Uh, a little bit of high. But leave himself going. behind the 2 ball. Oh, no. Got him for himself the 10. <laughs> All right. Nine ball. Nine ball next here. And then if he has the angle, he'd like to float it right to the long rail there and shoot that 13 ball on the side. Then he can draw it back for an easy 11 ball. Well, that's a good shot, too. So he's got to shoot that. Thir I would shoot the 13 ball next. That's the right shot. Good shot by Josh right there. Yeah, it was a good shot. And that was a good shot too. All right, should be two-two right here. 
If I didn't just jinx him. You might have. Well, you know, things happen. Yep, yeah, sure you jinxed did. him. No, you know what he did, though? Did you see him stand up? Stand up. Didn't take the shot seriously and didn't commit. doesn't matter how easy it appears, you have to give the shot the respect that it's due. Give the shot the amount of time and concentration that it takes to be able to make it. And don't think, oh, well, this is just a straight in eight ball. This is done. No, it's not. You have to take your time on all of them. Especially to tie it up. You know, you really should have been a little more focused there. Because there's a big difference between being three to one versus two to two. Yep. All right, Tony takes that down because Josh's mental error. Threw some unwanted English on it. Turned it a little bit. Should play it with follow. Nice, he's blaming it on you know the English and stuff like that, but it really wasn't even that. It was that he didn't give the shot the respect that it was due. Yes, it was straight in, you know, but. You've got to give the shot the respect that it deserves. Especially against a player like Tony Romano. Yeah, sure. As Alvin just said, inside pool.tv, we are worldwide here at Premium Billiards for the Central New York 8-Ball Bar Box Championships. Thanks for joining us on the YouTube channel, the Billiards channel on the Roku. We are here. We are grinding. Oh, and Josh just saved himself after you he know. took solid. He's behind two stripes now. Well, again, did you see the mental error? He just isn't taking it um, as serious as he needs to. He can make some shots. And he gives Tony ball in hand. He can make some phenomenal shots, but he just doesn't give the game and every shot the respect that it needs. How'd he beat you then? Got a couple good rolls, you know. I had a couple extremely good outs, and uh, you know the ball before the A ball. I just you know kept snookering myself one of the last shots, and I um, I played a great breakout shot, and uh, cue ball come around two or three rails, and made the eight. I didn't even see it. Didn't even think it was possible, but. It is what it is. Tony's taking away one of his problem balls right now. Yeah, when you get ball in hand, that's the first thing you have to address. You have to figure out where your biggest problem ball is and, and take care of it. That was a good shot. I think he wanted the 12 in the corner there. He has a shot. In, uh, if he goes for a 13 first, it leaves it open for the 10 ball because it won't go by the 4. Was that the ten ball there? He may be able to cut that thing in the side. I don't know. It's if tough. he was above it, though, I mean, he yeah. can't now, obviously. But no, he's got to play the fifteen. Or what ball is that? That's a twelve ball. Twelve ball. Burying himself. It's getting worse. Sometimes when I see myself making it worse, making it worse, making it worse, I just play safe. Yep. You have to. He's got a good safe right here if he uh, just hits the 14, leaves it behind the 15. See, he just said bank, you know, versus just playing a good safety. Just made it worse again. But he left, him, he left himself good. No, he did. He's got, he, Josh doesn't have a clear yeah, but shot. Okay, let's say he made it. Then what's he going to do? He's got the 15, that 15 on the side. How are you going to get position on the 10 ball from there? Off the side rail, off the... Yeah, but that's tough. You're going towards all four of those balls up there. Josh scratches. And he leaves it wide open for the 10 ball. Yep. He took care of all Tony's hard work there. There's a two-way on that 14 then. Where he's just going to be the bank and he misses. Sort of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I 
I didn't like that transition he just made. I would have played 10, 14, 15 in the side, then the 8. But See, I'm, I'm the same opinion on yeah. that one. I didn't like him where I left where he left himself for the 15. But what the hell do we know? We're here and he's shooting. That was good. He's also got 30 plus years on both of us. Yeah, for sure. Tonia brings it to 4-1 on Josh. 4-1. Yep. And Josh just made a couple of those mental errors that really harmed him. Tony set the break here in rack number six. Score is four to one. In favor of Tony. Fire says eight on break. You would have lost a five. I would have. It's not the worst I've lost to you, so. It's not the worst you've lost to me either. It's true. Looks like Tony broke dry too, so. No, I think he made a ball. Well, I'm looking at the table. It doesn't look like anything. I mean, I need it's glasses. Like six balls down. Six ball is down. Six ball is down. It is a darker color. And Tony's sh shooting the nine ball here, so he's taking stripes. And he did that really because the one ball is close to the eight, so. Yep. And actually, I think it was an easier run out. Thirteen, then the fourteen. What is that, the fifteen right there? Yeah, that's center the fifteen table. next to the center table, next to the one ball there. Actually. I'd say I'd use the ten for the, I don't know, maybe anchor ball, and put it, push the eight ball past the three and knock it out. No, ten ball and then break the eight one right now. Oh, no. I think that's what he's trying for. Because if he would have hit the eight ball full, he would have had a shot in the 15 ball on the side. Because the eight ball would have been down table a little bit towards the five ball. Mm -hmm. And then with the 15 in the side, he would have had the 14 there and the eight ball in the same corner. He's going to try and draw into this stuff now. He got it. But He's not going to leave himself anything for the 12 except well, he, for a bank. He could bank it. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd look for him to bank this and make it. If he banks and draws back, he can shoot the 8 ball in the same corner. He's going to pocket the 12 ball in. <laughs> if that 5 ball wasn't out there, he could have gone by the 3. Yeah, but you got to call the shot. Yeah, so. that's the only downside. Well, Josh just really needs to take his time just here. Just spot it right back up, right? 2-4 combo. See, I don't know why he's playing this 2-4 combo. That's the wrong shot. The four ball went by itself. He could have shot the one ball and made the three. Well, last time I said he took the wrong shot, he ended up making it work, but I don't think that it was necessarily the right shot. Seems like every time you say he may takes the wrong shot, he makes it. Oh no, he can make the shot. That's not. That doesn't mean that the shot doesn't go. That just means that you're making your run out harder and you're playing the wrong pattern. I would never go for a combo unless I absolutely have to. Yeah, now he's got to shoot another one. Versus playing the one and then shooting the three in straight. It's worked out for him well yeah, so far. It is. Last time I said he took the wrong shot, he made it work too, but that doesn't mean that he should have played it that way. Oh, just like that. Yeah, see, making stuff tough on himself. If he uses too much draw, it'll go right inside. He could play safe here too. Just bumped one, put the cue ball right behind the eight. Perfect. Good.
the thing is, is taking that wrong shot, even though he made it work and he won the game, made it a lot hard on him, a lot harder on himself mentally yeah. versus just taking an easy route. Yep. The right route would have been playing the one ball, then the three, then the five, the four ball in clean, the two ball in clean, the seven ball in clean, then the eight. That would have been the right pattern, I think. And again, that's just my Still pulled it off, though. Brought it to opinion. two four. Still got to win three more to beat Tony. But the thing is, is when you're shooting at the table and you're playing in a tournament, you don't want to take combinations. I mean, it, it's on the break, uh, especially, especially the tough, the tough, break. you know, uh, combinations like that. I mean, it's crazy. Not too bad. Tony hitting him with a rack here. <laughs> Hope he slugged him. I want to play Tony. I want to play Tony in the finals. Nothing. It's a tough choice right now. We got a few balls tied up. We got the 13, the 1, and the 9. We got the 12 in there as well. Yeah, and he's got to take solids. If he shoots a two ball, he can maybe even break that one ball out now. The six ball goes, so you don't have to worry about that. Well, he's got to go for the five now. Yeah, now he's got to go for the five. Five, three. Actually, that one ball may even go in to the side pocket. As long as he's on the it right side of it. straight back down. No, it doesn't help. No. No. I think he still can make something happen here. I think ideally he wanted to be straight on that seven ball so he could shoot a stop shot, shoot a stop shot on the four ball, and then maybe have the one on the side. I think that's what he was looking at. Tony really didn't do himself anything right here. Best thing he knew was just hit the one ball. Well, for all we know, he could have been thinking safe too. You know, I'm trying to think of a good safety here. He might be able to thin the one ball, go to the long rail, and go right back behind it. Oh, it's wow. like he was trying to bank it. Yeah, he was. I was almost going to say that, but I didn't think he would. You know, it's, this whole, it's only the one pocket players that uh, try to bank shots like that off another ball. Right, yeah. Well, see what Josh is doing here. He's, he's walking around trying to take his time because <laughs> that's, that's what he's been lacking here is taking his time, taking it serious. He does have a lack of patience, I've noticed. This entire set. I don't think it's lack of patience. I think it's just inexperience playing tournament level pool um, versus, you know, playing leagues where everybody's having fun, everybody's drinking some beers, and, you know, tournament pool is, is a way different game than what Josh is used to. You can't get caught up with, uh, you know, the rhythm that you develop when you're trying to play, you know, league matches. I don't even know what the point of that shot was, to be honest. It doesn't have anything after. No. See, what he did was he made that and said, oh, I'll create something after this. 
and maybe consciously or subconsciously that's what he was telling himself but that was the wrong wrong thought see i always think two to three shots ahead i don't know how well, you think. ideally you're, that's what you want to do and that worked out well for him but again you know you're trying to create something after the fact I just call safe here. Just shoot that one ball and just leave him up on the top rail. That's what I do. He's got leave, him out, leave him as long as possible in any shot that he has. The as long as the 13 is tied up, he can't do anything. Yep. So one ball might get in the way. It sure did. Had a bit of a roll there. I think he, he'd even admit it. But, uh... Well, is, he gonna, is that gonna? He's gonna try and cut that in the side, or is he trying to play safe here? Yeah, he was playing safe. That was a good shot. That's a good safe on Josh right there. Well, it's the four ball might play off the bot back of that 14 ball if there's enough wiggle room there. You're looking at a lot of wiggle room then. Tony <laughs> might be able to knock these out. Well, no, he Tony was just asking if he could play it off the back of the four or 14, which he can, and I think it can go. Yep, it does. I knew himself. that ball would go. That was a humongous pocket off the back of that 10 ball, or 12, whatever, whichever ball it was. Perfect. Nice shot. And there you have it. Bob is now your uncle. Tony Romano wins this match. 5-2. to two. Again, my name is Mike Andrews from Inside Pool Magazine. Thank you for joining us here on uh, InsidePool.tv, the Roku, the Billiards Channel, and on YouTube. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll be back soon with the next match.